Dare to be bold. Dare to be different. And dare to be inspirational. Rock stars. This is episode 21 of Stuck on Sawdust. Buckle up. What's up, you badass rock stars? I want to introduce y'all to my best friend real quick. This is Bear, and he's not feeling so well today, so we got a little cot for him in the corner of the shop. All right, you just stay right there, buddy. Rock stars. All right, now that we got him all settled in, today we're going to be going over some badass woodworking projects that spark that creativity us woodworkers often need. These projects don't require much labor. They don't require a lot of tools and they don't require a lot of time, but they will acquire a big ass profit. We're starting off this video, episode 21, with this badass magnetic key holder slash shelf. I saw this scrolling around online and on YouTube and figured I'd give it a shot with our own little spin on this thing. Hey! Sorry. <laughs> oh god, that was a bad idea. Ugh. Okay, say what you will about this item, but this thing is in 16 people's carts right now. So don't tell me that this ain't gonna sell and blah blah blah. Nah, this thing is a hot seller right now. So let's get to work and meet me at the table saw. Alright guys, so right here I've got some birch. And I thought it was maple at first. And then I remembered about three years ago, I purchased a big old slab of birch and I made a nice ass table out of it. Anyways, that's irrelevant. I've got these cutoffs from that birch that I just dug out of my shop. So we're gonna be implementing this into our project. And I've got this beautiful piece of Fiddleback Claro Walnut. And this thing is a beauty. And we're definitely implementing this. And then, I've got these sticks of pure copper that I'm going to be implementing into this project as well. Let's get to it. So I couldn't find the dimensions of their magnetic key holder slash shelf. So that's okay. We're going to make our own dimensions. These are 17 and a half inches long. So I only need one. And I really, really, really like this dark area right here. So I'm going to implement this into the actual shelf part. And I'm going to cut it square to long, 13 inches across the top. And then across the side, for the side piece, I'm going to cut it square to long, 4 inches. And that might wind up changing, but we're going to start with that. For our walnut, I think I'm going to leave it the same exact size it is right now, but I'm going to mill it down and get it nice and square. If you don't have a joiner or a planer, no worries. You can buy lumber S4S, which is surfaced four sides, and that will give you a nice piece to work with. But for now, I'm heading over to my joiner. Let's head back over to the table saw. Okay, so back over here at the table saw, my stock is exactly an inch and one eighth thick, two and a quarter inches wide, and this is 10 and three quarters. So let's go ahead and take our pieces over to our miter box. I'm gonna get this cut down square to long, 13 inches, and then cut my remaining piece square to long, four inches. And then we'll get the dimensions we need for our walnut after we cut those. Okay, so let's start by squaring up one end right now. Let's turn our bevel to a 45. Line your blade up with your mark and make this cut nice and slow. 
and there's our first piece at 13 inches square to long. Now we'll take our remaining piece and you want to ignore this long point because we want our grain to wrap around. So we'll make our long point directly at this short point. That way the grain stays consistent as possible. Make this cut nice and slow being a smaller piece. Take your time. Do not rush. Now, if we did our math right, it should be four inches. And look at there. <laughs> we got four inches, guys. So that's perfect. And this is how the grain lines up when you cut it like that. I don't know how good y'all can see that, but yeah. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get some blue tape and we'll tape our joint. And we'll add a dab of glue and take our finger, give it a little spread. Uh, I'm kidding. Let's stand that up and just give it a nice hard press. And you should be able to walk away from it. Let's grab our square and check for square. And that's perfect. While this is drying, I was supposed to be drilling this out for the magnets. And I just haven't been able to decide how I want this to sit in here. Whether I want it like this or like this. I really don't know. Oh my god, I, I have no clue. I'm I'm stomped, guys. No, that doesn't look good. Yes, that looks phenomenal. No, that doesn't look good. Okay, so I've got it. We're gonna go like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center of my piece. I'll just take my marking wheel, mark the center. And I'm gonna be using a dowel. I'm gonna drill a hole here and here. And then I'll transfer my hole to my piece here, but it's gonna be a little tricky. And I'll show you how we'll do that. But first, let's go drill out the hole on this piece for our dowel. All right, guys, I apologize. I did not hit record when I drilled out my holes, but I just went with the center of the board and I went in two and a half inches on either side. And I transferred my holes to my frame by doing this next step, which I'll show you now. So basically I just took my marking wheel and made the same mark for the center here on this piece. And that way I know that my holes would align perfectly. I already drilled these holes too on accident. I've totally forgot to hit record, but I'll show you just an example of how I transferred my holes. So I want a quarter inch space in between my block here and here. So I got a quarter inch piece of brass and I just set it up against my edge here. I took my Sharpie and I colored in the very tops of my dowels, making sure that I colored them in really good and heavy. And then I just took my little spacer here, lined it up here, and I just eyeballed for flush to my outside edge here. Once I felt I was flush, I just gave it a nice press and I kind of wiggled it around a little bit and voila, that left me with my two holes. But anyways, sorry that I missed that step for you guys. So now we know our holes are perfectly aligned and we'll have a quarter inch space in between each part here, which is perfect. Okay, and back over here at the drill press, we're going to just drill out for our magnets. And I'll put them right in the center again. And all come in about the same. Two and a half on either side. And then I'll put one in the center. So let's drill out for our magnets. I'm only going to drill out for two magnets right now because that's all I have. <laughs> so I put some Gorilla Epoxy in my magnet holes and just knocked my magnets in. And these are 
half inch in diameter magnets and they should be plenty strong to hold what I need them to hold. Now we'll add a dab of glue right into our dowel holes. We'll just knock these dowels back into the hole. Just like so, nice and easy. I was wondering why my thing wouldn't come up. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> my magnets. <laughs> I'm a dork. Okay, anyway, moving on. I am going to color in my dowels with this Sharpie. I probably should have painted them first, but hey, whatever. And I don't need to color in too much because they're only going to be proud about a quarter inch. All right. I'm happy with that. All right, so remember these solid copper brass pieces I was talking about earlier? Well, it's the next day and I finally decided where I'm going to put them. And I'm going to set them on the face of this piece right above each magnet. So they'll sit just like this in the inlay that I cut for it. Oh, them damn geese. <laughs> so we'll take our miter sled here and we'll get our blade height set right below, about a sixteenth below our copper here. And I'm going to add a soft little chamfer right on the edge of our copper. But first, let's go ahead and get our slots cut out. Make sure to mark with your copper the slot you want to cut. And just cut right inside of those lines. We got our first inlay cut. All right, and that is a perfect snug fit. And I'm just gonna cut this one slot first, and then I'll get it assembled and see if I wanna go ahead with the next one. I think I might just stay with one of them, but we'll find out real quick. So let's go ahead and we'll mark out our piece of copper where we need to cut it. And let's take this over to our miter saw and I'll show you how to get this cut on the miter box. So whenever cutting small pieces like this, especially copper or brass, even aluminum, I like to take a piece of wood and use that as my holding piece. And I'll set it right on top of the piece that I'm going to cut. And I'll actually cut right through the wood as well. And that just tends to help it stay in place and make a nice smooth cut. Take this cut nice and slow. Do not rush it, let the blade do the work. And there you have it. Perfect. So over here at my belt sander, I've got some 400 grit sandpaper on it and I'm just gonna polish up my copper real quick. When sanding, be sure to have a backer set up so your piece of copper doesn't get sucked into in between the deck and your sander right here. It will not be fun. Also keep in mind that this copper does get hot so you want to do it quick or you can wear a pair of gloves. All right, so I'm actually gonna stick with just one piece of copper in this piece. I really like this look and I like the overhang at the bottom. I was gonna push it up flush to the top, but I changed my mind. I really like this look. So I'm gonna hit this with some 400 grit hand sandpaper real quick, slap another coat of lacquer on it, and I'll meet you back at the workbench. So before we show the one that I just finished, I want to talk about theirs for a second. So this one, I found out, is actually made of concrete for the shelf. I don't do work in concrete, so I just used wood for mine, obviously. And look at the price they're asking for this thing. $90. That's a lot of money. 
Theirs is a little smaller than the one I made. And as far as the price being fair, yeah, I think that's a fair price, to tell you the truth. It's a different type of design. It's modern and sleek. And hell, he made it out of concrete and in a piece of wood. I mean, that's pretty original. So, got to give it to him. As far as the shipping cost, I imagine his shipping is going to be a little bit more pricey because I'm sure that concrete is pretty damn heavy. <laughs> so, as far as mine, let's talk about the one I built. So, I am absolutely in love with this thing. I can't be more happier than how this turned out. This walnut and this birch and the copper inlay, that contrast is just perfect. That is the sense of perfection I seek in my woodworking. And that dark spot that I was talking about earlier in the video just sets it off so nicely. And mine is made out of this beautiful figured Claro walnut piece of copper and this beautiful birch my piece is 13 inches long by four inches high and it's three quarter inch stock for the frame and it's three and a half inches wide my piece of walnut is ten and three quarters by two inches by an inch and an eighth thick as far as shipping I got shipping calculated at four dollars this thing is super light, super compact, and would be super easy to ship off. I've got these rare earth magnets that actually hold your keys. These magnets are even strong enough to hold up my tape measure. I mean, this tape measure isn't the lightest thing. And I can drop it from right here and it'll still hold it. So that's pretty damn strong. So I'm gonna post mine online for 80 bucks. I think that is more than fair, and I'll be offering free shipping anywhere in the United States. As far as the material costs, you're looking at about $1.50 worth of a 1x4, and then you could get a 2x4 from the big box store, and you could use that for the magnetic key holder. And I think that would be a good look as well. This design is one of my favorites. You don't have to do it exactly how I did mine, but you could definitely customize this thing all sorts of ways. And I'm excited to make a shit ton of these in the future. It's super fun to make and you can design this thing all sorts of ways. It, there, it's just the options are endless and I absolutely love that about this project. You can make it wider, you can make it longer, you can add stuff up top. I was thinking of adding some miter splines, but I didn't want to take away from the modern look of it, so I kept the miter splines out of it. That's definitely an option you could do. So for the material, for the magnets, the piece of copper, you're looking at around $10 to build this piece. I'll leave links in the description for the rare earth magnets that I have and the copper inlay. I'll also leave a link to my supplier for the exotic hardwoods and just tell them that Daniel sent you. So this project is probably going to be my favorite project for 2024. It's that cool and that badass. And it definitely packs a big ass profit. Now, let's talk about the mounting hardware. They have these French cleats that I often talk about. And they're these aluminum cleats that you could easily cut down to size to fit your project however you need it to. And I would recommend doing it this way. You could also build your own French cleat on the back here and just have your own custom wood French cleat. And then they have this option. This requires a little more work and they're a little bit more pricey. And I don't think they're necessary for this project, but it's a good option for you if you don't like the French cleat system. So consider using those. So I went ahead and grabbed my work truck keys and these are pretty damn heavy. And I wanted to show you all an example just of how strong those magnets really are. So when you post online, you need to keep in mind, okay? And I know from experience with Etsy. So Etsy is going to charge you a publishing fee. That publishing fee is 20 cents per item you publish 
for four months. Also, when you make a sale, Etsy is going to charge you a sales fee anywhere from 3.5% to 6.5%. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so obviously I've changed my mind and I put some French cleats on the back here. Just to give you all an example of what I was talking about with some wood French cleats. And I've got my opposing cleat on the wall. We'll just hang it just like so. And there you have your key hold. And what I really like about the French cleat system is that it lets your piece sit tight to your wall so there's no gap. I want to encourage y'all to become a member of Bearded Viking Woodworks. Go to your desktop or laptop and open up YouTube, search Bearded Viking Woodworks and click join. There's three levels of membership that you can join. Look over the descriptions of each level and I'll let you choose. I want to give a shout out to a couple of my members. First up, Walter. He made this badass lighthouse and I wouldn't even know where to begin to start building this. <laughs> but he's from Bangor, Maine. That's way up north. And he recently opened up a woodworking business. It's called Graying Wolf Woodworks. Cool damn name. On YouTube, he is at grayingwolf.woodworks. I really like this lighthouse. I mean, this thing is super cool. Great job, Walter. Keep it up, brother. Also, I want to give a shout out to one of my members named Joel. He has a wood shop named Pop Bob's Workshop. <laughs> he sent me a picture of this badass American flag concealment case, and this thing is amazing. I've seen a few of them online, and I've always wanted to try my hand at making one, but this one definitely gets two thumbs up in my shop. He made this here for his brother, and I'll tell you what, that has got to be one happy brother. Good job, Joel. Rockstars, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. This project is absolutely stunning, and I can't wait to update y'all on how quick it sold and how much I sold it for. This is Bearded Viking Woodworks, and I have been Daniel. Until next time, get in your shop and make some sawdust. Thanks, guys.